by the way, if, if we start going off on a tangent and are not making sense for like more than, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds or something, like you can wave your hands and tell us to slow down or like you don't know what the hell we're talking about. We're all cool with that. And yeah, heckling's fine too. It's the last session of the day, so you gotta, you know, let loose a little bit. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think on that note, um, considering it is the last session, we don't want to keep you here all night. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So um, yeah, we're gonna talk about the Drupal 8 theme system. Um, it's kind of a, a, a grab bag of stuff, uh, but the core of it is how you get from hook theme to twig template that actually outputs something, whether it's HTML or you know XML or JSON or whatever you're, whatever you're doing. Um, so we're just gonna start by just quickly introducing ourselves. So I'm Scott Reeves, a developer at Digital Kidna in London, Ontario. We're uh, about 40 people, and uh, if you see these people in the jerseys, that's us. So uh, you can also come by our booth and enter a draw to win this really sweet uh, Drupal 8 jersey, which, yeah, this Lori wants. And uh, I, I'm like not a hockey person at all, but I want this thing. It's pretty sweet. It's got the Drupalcon on the front. It's got like Drupal 8 at the back. So stop by our booth if that sounds interesting. Um, I'm one of the uh, co-maintainers of the theme system in Drupal 8 and um, just help to get Twig into core and just make things in general simpler. Um, I'm sort of, this part is sort of fading away, sadly, but um, I'm, so I'm a Drupal core mentor as well. This is how I got into contributing to Drupal 8. So if you're kind of interested in contributing, um, my immediate suggestion would be to come on Friday and I, you know, come to the, uh, New uh, contributor workshop, or come to the sprints, or you know wherever you are. And uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, and I like beans because that's the uh, the bean in Chicago. There's kind of a theme going here. You'll see. <laughs> All right. So uh, my name is Joel Patet, and I'm uh, I've been working on websites since 2001, roughly. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that have Get been out. working on longer. <laughs> Um, I'm what's known as a full stack developer, so I like to do front end stuff and back end stuff and some DevOps stuff um, to break my servers. And um, I'm also a core um, system main subsystem maintainer um, for the th theme system, and I worked with Scott and a number of other people to uh, get Twig into core. And yeah, big fan of pierogies. That's a giant pierogi in northern Alberta, <laughs> <laughs> Canada. Amazing. Okay. Um, and now that uh, we've told you a little bit about ourselves, uh, we'd just like to find out a bit about you. Um, since we, we've kind of started already asking you which sessions are you going to and stuff, but uh, so just raise your hand if you consider yourself a site builder at all. This should probably be pretty much everyone because, yeah. Um, themers? Awesome. Represent. Uh, developers? Like back end developers, I guess, but yeah. Uh, DevOps? Handful, okay, cool. And other, miscellaneous, etc. Cool. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Beer drinker, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that counts. All right, cool. Well, thank you all for coming, and uh, I hope you can learn something. And uh, we should have time for some questions at the end, so we can have some questions or discussion. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. So to start with, we're going to talk about some of the uh, theming changes in Drupal 8. We'll probably do this section a little bit fast considering how many of you went to Morton's session, but we're not gonna we're not gonna zoom by it, so don't worry. So the template process layer in I think it's in Drupal six as well, definitely in Drupal seven, in my opinion very confusing. Like hard to tell when you're supposed to use preprocess and when you're supposed to use process. And after kind of delving into the theme system, basically um, at least our interpretation is that the main reason why it was invented was to flatten strings into HTML, and probably the simplest example would be something like classes. So if you've got like an array of classes, then you you uh, you know 
can manipulate that array through all your pre-process and all that kind of stuff. And then right before it gets to your template, the process goes, okay, I'm going to just like implode this and add, add a space in between each class. Um, and in Drupal 8, we, we kind of changed this. So we, there was a lot of work to get, the, to get rid of the process layer, but it's completely gone. So there's just one layer in between basically your data and your templates, so it's much simpler. And what we, we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but basically the kind of the paradigm that we favor is lazy rendering, which is, is cool for if you like being lazy. Uh, but basically what it means is that we render things as late as possible, and that usually means from the Twig template itself. So yeah, it's just kind of, it's, it's, a, good, uh, it's a good thing for everyone. So template process layer is gone. Theme functions, um, they're, they're so Drupal 7. Actually, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> theme functions are so Drupal 7, though. So for theme functions, we, uh, we, f we found out, and same, same with the process layer, is that with theme functions, people were calling them early. Um, a lot of times, you know, inside of a pre-process, you'll call a theme function for another, for another template or another theme and it would be flattened into a string and then that string would be sent to st sent to another template and what what that meant is that that data was flat and you could not change it unless you wanted to do some fancy re regular expressions to try to manipulate the the rendered markup um cuz it's already been flattened out when it hits the template that you're working with uh so the process layer and the themes were um were removed for that purpose also, just because we have two different ways of doing the same thing, we wanted to simplify it and try to move as much or if everything to the template. Um, that way, we're just always working with one thing instead of, oh, maybe sometimes it's inside of a theme function, sometimes it's a template. And the biggest thing, in my opinion, for the reason why he's pointing at me to look at this one is that I really hated concatenating strings. And I'm sure a few of you are uh, getting strings to make a markup inside of a PHP file. That's what theme functions were. They're just a function that rendered out. It was your template, but in function format. And it it was a bunch of output dot equals string escape, whatever quotes you had in there. A big giant list of those. Uh, and then you've got return that. And that was, that was what a theme function was. And it really is makes it hard if for syntax highlighting. I couldn't actually see my... Um, what tags were closed properly because my browser's like that's a giant string as long as you close the string it's fine um, so yeah it just makes it a lot easier to work with from a front end perspective to work with a template than a theme function agreed so um, there's only 12 theme functions left in Drupal 8 um, we would really love to get to zero but the reality is some of these are like admin type things that you're not really going to care about, but there is still um, basically the only ones left that you would care about in your day to day as as a theme or front end developer are a couple ones from views, and we already have template versions of them, so it's it is still quite easy to override them as a template uh, if you prefer, which I usually do. So we're even though there's 12 left, we're in a pretty good state, and considering there was like 150, like we've already converted like 150 of them, so. Uh, we're doing pretty good. Um, the other thing I, I just want to mention before we move on from this, any um, like contrib module developers or potential contrib module developers, even or even custom in your own like agency or practice, um, please don't add theme functions in Drupal 8. Um, I will come and yell at you, <laughs> <laughs> or or your your front end developer who's sitting like across from you will be like, why did you do this? So yeah. People will yell at you. Just, just do the right thing. Make it a template. It's still possible to make theme functions in Drupal 8. Don't do it. Thank you. <laughs> so this is part of the the theme the theme suggestion hooks are is part of the simplification sort of that I was alluding to earlier. In Drupal 7, you could manipulate. So actually, before I kind of jump into this explanation, how many people are familiar with? Um, like theme suggestions or like template kind of file names where you can do um, so I think like the kind of canonical example that I use is like you have node.tpl.php or .html.twig and then you have node-article 
that is a template suggestion or a theme suggestion. Cool? So in Drupal 7, you could manipulate these theme suggestions in the pre-process layer uh, for some reason. I guess, like, basically the reason that I can think of is that it was just kind of tacked on there. But uh, it's kind of problematic because at that point, it might already be too late. Uh, if you want to kind of, if you're in a pre-process and you have some reason to say, hey, wait a minute, go over here, you can't really do that. Like one, one use case might be if you have, um, if you have like nodes and taxonomy terms and users and all these things that are entities, you might have some use case where you want to redirect them all to like entity.html.twig. But it's kind of wasteful if you're preparing all the stuff for the user and preparing and then you're going, wait a minute, go, to, go over to entity and then I'm going to like redo all this stuff. So for, ver for a lot of reasons, we decided to put the suggestions first before the pre-process, make it its own discrete step. It's very small, like when you write these hooks, unless you have a lot of logic, which you're keying off of, they're, they're as you can see, they're quite small. So um, the top example is, uh, let me just get over there. So the top example is um, within the pre-process. You can see like the code looks very, very similar. Um, you're just basically, we're kind of adding some static suggestions in here just as an example. And then uh, the D8 version is just, you just alter the suggestions that are coming through and you can just add your own. And um, if this whole theme suggestion thing isn't clear, then we'll have uh, kind of a better demo in a few minutes when we talk about uh, some more Twig stuff. And uh, this is about goodbye to theme. So I'll let Joel take this one. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, when you're calling theme directly, you are rendering that set of variables as a string and then passing it into a variables of, say, a preprocess to pass it to another template. This is what happened a lot in Drupal 7 and we've tried to standardize it so that we could keep that structured data together all the way from the preprocess and, and from where that may be a controller of some sort um, or a menu hook in Drupal 7, keep that structured data all the way to the template so that you can manipulate it all the way along. If you flatten it too early, then it's useless to anybody later on that's trying to do any manipulation on that data. And we've done a lot of work to structure this data, so might as well keep it structured until we need to flatten it. And so that's what we're doing by replacing these calls to theme directly. Um, and so we're doing render arrays, and they look very similar. The only big difference there is that we're using square bracket syntax from, H, uh, from PHP 5.4. Um, that's the biggest difference there, but they, the same uh, render array structure that we have in Drupal 7, just kind of using that more consistently across all of core. Yep. And I just want to, just to kind of bring it back to sort of the more front-end developer side just for a moment before we move on. Um, what this what what this means is that the Drupal 7 versus the Drupal 8, like the Drupal 7 version, which we've just kind of invented here, but just work with me, um, that list variable would be a string of HTML. And like Joel was talking about earlier, like if you need to modify that, like do you bust out like regular expressions, like string replace, like please, God, no. Um, the Drupal 8 version, you can actually work with, you could like drill down into that list variable and be like, oh, just give me the items. And like, I don't care about the Drupal markup. I'm just gonna like make my own list and like I'm a rebel and I'm gonna make it like a definition list or something and you can go ahead and do that. Uh, so it just, it gives you a lot more flexibility. And this kind of comes back to that whole lazy rendering concept because in the second version, um, if you print that list variable, in your Twig template, it gets automatically rendered by Twig in, like from the template stage rather than earlier on. All right, now we're gonna talk about attributes. Uh, this kind of ties into the whole process thing, like I was talking about how you have this array of classes, so the whole attributes array, classes array, all those kinds of things are basically gone now. We have um, an attribute class or object now that contains all of that and and knows, it basically knows all about attributes. So you can add stuff, you can remove stuff. It knows how to print itself. So when you do this,
this in the twig template, it's like, oh, okay, I know what an, I know what all these are, attributes are, and I know that classes need to have spaces in between them. So it's just kind of nice. It gives us a, a nice sort of API around attributes. So you'll see this kind of thing if you uh, crack open a copy of Drupal 8 and start looking at the templates. Um, and yeah, if you're if you see stuff like this, uh, don't do that because, um, like I said, attributes know all about themselves. This this class, so yeah, um, it'll it'll add that little space. If there's no attributes, you'll just get a nice clean div tag, and you're good. And uh, you can also do some fancy things in Drupal 8 uh, where you're pulling out certain things. So we can see like drilling down and grabbing the class out of the attributes and then printing all the rest of the attributes and I think this is really nice because it kind of reads like English to me um, it's just like okay give me the attributes in the class and then give me the without the class and the extra nice part in my opinion is that this without concept you can use on in like your node template as well like on that content array um, which Morton had some really good examples of in his talk, so I'm, I'm not going to go into too much. Um, you can look it up on YouTube, but yeah, it's just, it's pretty cool. And, um, er, yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, who thinks what? What's a better color? <laughs> yellow. Okay. I, I like yellow. Let's try yellow. We're web developers. We can do this. Right. Okay. So let me get this code again. Thank you very much, by the way. So um, I'll just kind of keep yammering on while I'm trying to. Oh, I'll do that. I'll okay, do that. he's going to do it. Okay, never mind. So uh, this concept of without was. Uh, oh. This yeah. co this concept of without, we're gonna actually going to go into more detail on a different slide, um, but it allows you to drill into any array and remove one of the child pieces. So in Drupal, uh, in, it's I'm actually going to just talk about attributes here. So attributes in Drupal 7, we use Drupal underscore attributes, or somebody might just hard code them. I'm not sure. Um, so Drupal attributes did that concatenation for you, and then we would pass that through on probably a pre-process layer. But now we're actually passing it directly to the template, so we can manipulate that att att attributes inside the template. And before, it was always like an array that was held up until the last second, and like. Scott mentioned before in the process layer that array would be flattened by Drupal attributes function and now in Drupal 8 attributes is an object that is kind of a smart object that knows when you try to print that object it flattens itself and that's the kind of trick magic that we do right now so that you can actually manipulate it inside the template um, and then when it's actually printed it will flatten itself Isn't that <laughs> better <laughs> with golden rod. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now that we can all read the code, that's that's helpful. Because it's good because um, when talking about this stuff, it's kind of hard to avoid the code. So yeah, sorry, not sorry, et cetera. Um, so we've had this attributes thing actually um, in Drupal 8 for quite a while. And more recently, we kind of realized that we want to be able to do this kind of stuff from the template, so we started adding these types of things. Um, we really didn't have to do anything special to Twig to get it to do this. We just added these methods on the attribute class itself, um, and so it's nice because you can do this kind of stuff from the template and from, let's say, pre-process in the ex in pretty much the same way. Um, so I, again, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Also, uh, for any people who dabble with like jQuery, it's pretty similar to that. Um, so yeah, you can add classes, you can remove classes. Um, you can also uh, test uh, to see if classes are there. So you this one was a special request from Morton. Yes, 
This is all Morton, so you can thank him for that. Because, um, yeah, you can, you can just see, does something have a class, and then do your own logic based on that. Uh, and then we also have some stuff for non-class for all the other attributes. So you can do set attribute, you can do remove attribute, uh, whatever you want. You can add data attributes, um, you can remove stuff, sky's the limit, pretty nice. And um, before, I, before I show this nasty bit of code, um, <laughs> show and hide in, in templates in Drupal 7. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, who used show and hide? Because last time there was quite a few. OK, that's good. OK. And um, who understood exactly how they were working? <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're in, they were kind of like, unfortunately, they were kind of like niche tools in a way when they should have been like every day. But anyway, so this is kind of an example of something in Drupal 7, how you would, this is a very made up use case. It's like you'd have all kinds of duplicate stuff, but it's just for the sake of this example. So uh, Joel, do you want to yeah. explain that? So uh, the first thing is that show and hide um, are very simple in terms of what they actually do. They just set a property called printed to true or false. Uh, that is all they do on the array. Um, and then the uh, the render function will read that and decide whether or not it should actually print it. So in the first one here, we're, we're hiding, uh, on the content array, we're hiding the renderable array called content. We're hiding comments and links. And then we are trying to render the rest of the content and uh, without those two things in it. And then we, we could do this later in the code or whatever, that's kind of the idea behind it. You can, later down the code, you could print this out. Then what we're trying to do is print only the links. So maybe you wanted to wrap that in a special div uh, so that we could style it specifically. Um, and then after that, we're just kind of showing those links again. So basically setting it so that the printed is false so that it can be shown again. And we're printing everything except for, and unfortunately in this case, it looks like we're printing everything, but we're still not printing the comments because the comments are still hidden. Um, and I found this frustrating because I didn't realize that I might have, I, I might have, um, I might not have turned that on or off, and it could be far up the code to try to realize that. So it was it was really frustrating for that. Also in Drupal 8, we were having some issues with being able to print like the links twice on the same page because of some reference stuff. So um, in Drupal 8, come up with a different kind of concept to directly act on that array. And we use some filters in Twig to say uh, without. And this was actually mimicked from uh, another project, and I cannot remember the name of it. Um, but there's another project that uses Twig, and they use a very similar concept for m removing parts of it. Possibly, so possibly the Craft CMS. Yeah, maybe. Possibly. Okay. Um, so we took that same concept and, and applied it to the render arrays, and we have here the same thing. Uh, we're we're removing links and comments from the com uh, from the content, and printing it out in one shot. So it's in context with what you're trying to do. Then if I print just the links, I can say content.links and I can print only the links. And it's just kind of a lot easier to kind of drill down that way and grab the things that you want when you want them. I could also print links twice if I want to. And uh, on the last one there, um, I'm removing the without and I'm printing the entire thing again. And I didn't have to worry about, oh, later up in the code did I hide that or not. I can just print it out. So you're always acting on the entire object. Yeah, and so this this kind of I mean, we didn't change render arrays. Render arrays still have this state of whether they're printed or not, but um, we kind of don't care about that in Twig templates. We don't keep track of that state um, because there was actually kind of like a hack in, in like earlier versions of Drupal 8 um, where, like, and it was causing all this overhead and stuff, basically just to support this show and hide thing, which was like very unintuitive. So. We have this, it works for render arrays, it works for attributes. Um, we hope you like it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, we also got Twig in the D8 th theme system. Whoops, uh, I guess we should have mentioned that earlier. <laughs> and uh, we also get some pretty fun toys with Twig. Um, we get Twig Debug, which is like one of my favorite things ever, and Morton's as well. Um, so this shows you a lot of 
lot, a lot, a lot of useful information. Uh, no disrespect to the developers of, uh, what is it, Theme Developer? Or Devel Themer? Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Again, no disrespect, but we just think this is the better solution. Um, so this shows you all of your potential theme suggestions. If you add your own theme suggestions, they'll show up here as well. And the little X, um, yeah, the little X, the little X shows you which one's actually being used. You also get the full path to the actual template. So if you want to override it, you can just say, oh, that one. Copy it to your uh, templates directory and you're good to go. Um, we may potentially get a checkbox in the UI for turning this on in before D8 comes out. Uh, there's an issue for that, but uh, for now you go into your uh, like sites default services.yaml and you change, there'll, there'll already be a line there that says um, debug equals false and you just change that to true and uh, clear your cache and then you'll see all this goodness. And um, by the way, uh, Twig is also improving Drupal 7. What's up? So we have theme debug in, if you have Drupal 7.33 or higher, uh, you can just add in your settings PHP, uh, conf theme debug equals true, and you get the pretty much the exact same thing that's in Drupal 8. So um, yeah, um, so that this is why we have this slide in here because people don't know this. <laughs> so, sorry, <laughs> not sorry. <laughs> um, and the only real, like this is awesome that it's in Drupal 7, but it kind of comes with the caveat that most of the stuff in Drupal 7 is coming from theme functions. So this only works for templates, okay? So it'll work for your page templates, node templates, all that kind of stuff. But it's not gonna work for like theme item list or like theme links or any of those things. So, but still very, very useful. And I use this like pretty much every day in my day job now. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, now let's talk about sandwiches uh, in an attempt to get you all ready for dinner, I guess. Or yeah, I don't know, sandwiches for dinner? Eh. No. <laughs> uh, the code for this is all up on GitHub. Um, and actually while I have this up, um, I should mention that the session node for this talk will have the link to the slides and all these links are going to be live and stuff. So um, yeah, I should have mentioned that earlier, but there you go. So Joel will uh, talk us through how we can make a sandwich with Drupal 8. Okay. Um, I want to kind of describe how you would build something that's themable for the theme system. It's very similar to Drupal 7. So if you haven't done it in Drupal 7, you can actually do this in Drupal 7 or 8, um, more or less the same way. So the first, I like to describe it as you're defining what variables you can pass to the template. Um, and so you're, you're creating a template, you want to mark it up, but you also want to pass data to it. So you want to define what that template can accept. Um, this is what you do in theme or hook theme. And so in this case, our module is called sandwich, and we create a um, a hook theme called sandwich theme, and then we just pass back the name of our uh, the theme that we're uh, the template that we're trying to create called sandwich, and we set up the variables that we want, and we can actually default them to sp to specific values. And here we're just setting them to empty arrays and, and strings, um, just to kind of prep them. And then next, we're actually building out the values or building out the data that we want to pass to the template. So this is actually somebody actually using this um, this themable output and trying to send data to a template. So the first thing we do here is um, we're returning a renderable array. That's the square bracket at the top. We've got theme, and then the name of the, the theme, and you've probably done this in Drupal 7 a number of times, and you're, you're passing all the different val values. The only little difference here is you see that T function is actually inside of, a, um, is injected, and that's a, like a inject injected inside of the, the controller, um, which is what we're doing with uh, Drupal 8 now is in controllers instead of menu hooks. Um, and each variable gets passed to the template, and then the next one is we're inside of the template, and you can actually 
uh, see all those variables being printed out. We're checking to see if the, the values are, are there and then printing markup around them. Uh, the, the if and end if is, is your control structures you see with a percent sign and then the curly brackets, the double curly brackets are how you print things in, in Twig templates. And even though like array or attributes was a, a, an array, it gets converted to that array object that we were talking about earlier, and you can print it out as if it was nothing. All a render, all arrays actually are treated as renderable, re renderable arrays, <laughs> renderable arrays, inside of um, the Twig template, and will um, will be printed out. So I'm sure Morton went over this, but in Drupal 7, you had to, t if you had a renderable array, you had to know that it was in a renderable array, and then you had to say render parentheses, pass it in there, and then print that. Now you just print that variable. And it's a lot easier to work with, and you can also check it the same way. Okay. And then, yeah, voila, uh, this is what I styled it as. Um, so I made I made that variable, um, sorry, that renderable array print out two sets of uh, menu items and styled the output. And that is up on uh, GitHub for you to play with and try messing around with and making different kinds of sandwiches. And uh, we'll show you this code actually working because we have a demo that will tie into this uh, in a short little while. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to talk about a few more things. So um, this uh, really, before I get into this, I just I want to emphasize that basically this hasn't changed very much between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. Uh, with the exception of those theme suggestion hooks that I was talking about earlier. Basically just the only difference is that things, well, on, on a uh, high level, the only thing that has really changed is that some of this code has been moved to classes. So um, Drupal render is what you, what gets called on your render array. So if you've got like a, let's say like a block or like a page controller or something, um, or a page callback uh, in Drupal 7, um, you would you could return a render array from that and then Drupal will call Drupal render on it and inside of there um, pre any pre-render callbacks you added uh, can be will be called Joel will be talking a little bit more about those later and then the actual theme function is called inside of there you get your pre-process functions inside of your pre-process functions you get your suggestions and then uh, your your actual template or your theme function is rendered and then you have the post render, which seems like a really kind of weird step because, you know, like we were saying earlier, like, you know, why would you want to manipulate this string of HTML? Because in in our last step here in post render, it is a string of HTML. But uh, basically, the use case for that would be if you have some kind of customization uh, that you could you could still cache something, and then the post render could could fill in like let's say the person's name or something like that. So you could have all of it cached and then you could just have like a little placeholder or something and then post render would put in the person's name. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think the um, the messages block works like that in Drupal 8. Um, don't quote me on that, but maybe. Uh, Drupal 8, like I said, uh, like these things look kind of scary, like this Drupal service stuff. If you haven't seen it, don't worry about it. We're not gonna talk about it. Um, basically the code has moved is the main thing. Um, Everything in here is all the same, other than, like I said, the theme suggestion hooks are now a discrete step before pre-process. That's it. And uh, so now Joel's going to talk about type and uh, give you the Coles notes. Um, I just a backstory here. I don't like types that much, um, but they have some very good use cases for them. Um, and yeah, Coles, Coles notes is a uh, Canadianism, just so you know. So yeah, yeah they're, they're uh, I think most people know them as Cliff notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just uh, Coles is a bookstore in Canada, and yeah, I think it's they the sell con the content would be different, but exact same idea. Yeah, yeah, more maple syrup, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the pages are pretty sticky. It's hard to. Yeah. Um, so. In Drupal 7, we had these uh, element info hooks that you can use to define these. And the reason why we have these things is to give repeatable, reusable types of renderable arrays 
so that you don't have to define all the different properties that you looked at earlier uh, over and over again. Um, and the main one that I see in Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 is, is a, a, a pre-render hook, or sorry, a pre-render callback. And in this case here, I just have an example of HTML tag. Um, it just, in our case, it's used for making a script or a style tag in the header. Um, and it allows you to, it has a little bit of a pre-render hook in there to wrap conditional, ta t uh, conditional HTML tags around for IE. And uh, allows you to pass some attributes, so it'll be like the source attribute and the uh, ref attribute, et cetera, and then possibly a value if it's one of those uh, tags with a value. So that's a very generic render element. Um, and in Drupal 8, it's very similar. The big difference there is, uh, like, uh, if you look at like side by side, they're doing exactly the same thing. Just we've moved them into an an object, and that object is discoverable. So there's no hook there. It's finding it based on that little attribute that says at render element, and then that HTML tag is mapped to where it says types on the other side. Everything else is identical, and um, and we're but the big difference here is all the things that it's that's that it's working with the pre-render is actually inside the object, so it's like contained within there. There's not these extra functions that are in the global namespace for um, just kind of messing with things. It's all part of this render element type, or inside of this one specifically, the HTML tag has its own pre-render uh, methods, so it encapsulates it a lot better. Um, and it's discoverable quite a bit easier for it to be discoverable by these little plugin annotations. Kind of weird to look at the annotations too, but they, they, they work really well. Um, and the next is that, like, I, I, I kind of see them as using them as, def uh, as a set of defaults of the properties or values that I'm passing along to my, my uh, Twig template, but I'm also, um, it doesn't necessarily have to um, use a theme. It's a renderable array that can be used with just a preprocess. Um, in this case, Link actually does that. It doesn't actually use a, a template. Um, there's no real reason to make a template for a Link tag. So it uses a pre-render and then just renders the output um, using pound markup. And um, you can see the, the pre-render code there. Um, is doing a lot of extra work for us, but we wouldn't want to write that extra code um, for every single link that we're generating to, that would be just horrible. So what we do is we wrap it up in this this type, and then all I have to do is create type link, pass a title, pass a URL to it, and boom, the link will, will deal with things like, maybe it's an active link, and it'll put the active class on it, or maybe it uh, uh, needs to be set up for Ajax or something like that, and it puts the little, Ajax information on it as well. It allows us to kind of reuse code, and that's the main purpose behind it. Um, we would love to join the two, where we have the hook hook theme and and hook type, but we haven't got around to do that yet. But um, yeah, this allows us to reuse some of our code, and we use this mainly for forms. Uh, we also have a new one called Type Table that allows us to put like the infinite zebra, s zebra striping stuff on there and the, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and sticky tables, sticky header tables and stuff like that. And all the JavaScript as well. Cool. Um, now we're going to talk about Twig magic, because uh, Twig is magical. This is this is one of the coolest things about Twig. And uh, just to quickly mention, uh, you know, features often come at a cost. This is also one of the slowest parts of Twig, because it has to do so much. Um, but there is a Twig extension available for PHP, um, and just recently um, a sort of a, a little bit of code was added so that when you go to the status report on your Drupal 8 site, it'll say, hey, like, I notice you don't have the Twig extension, and it gives you uh, a link to documentation on how you can set that up. And, you know, it'll depend on if your host supports it or not, but that basically makes this kind of process um, quicker because it compiles it to it has a, uh, like a C version of that, so anyway. Um, so when you do sandwich.cheese within a Twig template, this is kind of like a short version of all the stuff that it's gonna try and the order that it's gonna try to get that cheese for you. 
and put it in your mouth. <laughs> so uh, the first thing it'll do is it'll see, okay, is this an array? And it'll just grab it from the array. Uh, next, it'll see if it's an object. And the that one also works for um, the magic is set and get. And um, I don't frankly understand all of this stuff. Joel understands it a lot better. Uh, but we're we don't really need to explain this. It's just if you, yeah, it's just there. It's it's going to go through every single one of those ones to try to find uh, that variable, and it's the reason why it does that is so that you can think of a, a hash array or a object in the same way into it. You don't have to say, oh, is this an object? Oh, okay, I have to treat it a little bit differently. Oh, is it an array? I have to treat it a little bit differently. You can treat them both the same. So sandwich dot cheese um, coming from PHP, you don't have to know what kind of thing it is in PHP. You just know that there's a, there's a property on sandwich called cheese, and you want to get the value of that. Yeah, that's very good. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that, Joel. So, and then, yeah, just going down the list, if you've got a cheese method, we'll call that. If you've got get cheese or if you've got is cheese. And the last one, um, I really don't understand. But anyway, it's there. <laughs> so, um, Joel, I'll let you talk about... Uh, cover some auto escape stuff. So this is another thing that we got from Twig, security, so that uh, front end developers don't have to worry about like introducing all these crazy cross-site scripting vulnerabilities and stuff. Okay, so auto escape is what was a little bit tricky for me to grasp my head around when I was looking at how we can we get this into core because it's usually done with frameworks and not with CMSs. Um, and with, s with frameworks, you have direct control of the variables that are coming into your system. With CMSs, it could be coming from any number of entities or, or um, WYSIWYG tools that people are using. So it's a little bit of a, a trick situation. But what we've done, I think we've kind of gotten it working, and it was a lot of work um, by a, a whole bunch of people to get this wrapped in there. In Drupal 7, you had to check plain uh, things. So if you just for example, took that variable, tried to print it into the template uh, as uh, just straight up, I'm going to print this object's variable, the user's first name. It would throw an XSS attack basically at you, and you'd get a nice alert on the screen. Um, so what we have to do in Drupal 7 is we have to say, oh, that's user input. I have to, I have to make sure that it's sanitized before I put it onto the screen, or else I'm going to get an XSS attack. Um, and so we check plain everything, and we check plain things maybe too early, or we check plain them in the template, and people have to know that they have to check plain because the, if they don't, and I actually did this on the uh, uh, site recently, and I realized I did, and I was like, oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> so um, I had to check plain it in my template, uh, and then in Drupal 8, we've switched it around. We've kind of turned it on its head, and what to do that? Whenever you print a variable in Twig, it's going to assume that it's not safe and it's going to escape the values for you. And if you need the raw values, you can use raw, but it's still not a good idea because you'll get an XSS attack and, and that kind of stuff. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so you, could, you pipe raw, the pipe is a filter and it allows it to get the raw value of that variable, but if you just print it, you're going to be safe. And that's that's kind of a different way of looking at it. Instead of having to remember that you need to escape these variables, it's going to escape them automatically. And then you have to kind of, it's more of like slap in the face, oh yeah, it's escaping my string that I just put as, a, as, a, as HTML. I have to tell Twig that it's safe. And there's a, a few methods to do that. I'm not going to go into the, the details on that. You can ask questions on that one later. I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview of what we're trying to change here. Actually, sorry, I missed a slide here. Well, we could have put it in the slide. Anyway, quick quick demo time. Um, I should have actually done this after the Twig Magic, so let me go back there for a second. And uh, yeah, and then we'll have some time for questions. So uh, I just want to kind of show a couple things. So Morton, um, Morton mentioned Kint. Uh, so we'll kind of do a live demo of that and show you how that allows you to access the mystical powers of Twig Magic. So, um, first of all, let me just get the uh, sandwich up here. Okay, so voila, in sandwich. Um, it's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so. Does it work? 
six. Um, just right through here. No. Oh, I gotta. Okay, bear with me here. I gotta take this out of full screen. Okay. There we go. Okay. Make that nice and big. Can everyone kind of see that? Okay. I'm gonna uncomment them so they'll be easier to read. So, to just see all of the variables that are in your template. You just do double curly brackets and then kint on the function with the two uh, parentheses. And you have to have twig debug on. And by the way, kint is uh, it's a sub module kind of the develop module. So if you're used to using like DPM or things like that, um, or KPR, or any of those, it's it's the same idea, same module. So we're getting this, I put this in the sandwich.html.twig template, that line, so we're getting this, we're, we're getting two uh, sandwiches being rendered here, so we get two little kint output things, and um, we can see all the stuff that's coming through, so we can see like attributes, we can see some of the strings and things, and the arrays that are coming through, and this is, it's pretty similar to Krumo. Um, the, the thing that I really like about it is uh, this thing right here, in particular, available methods, because this is what allows you to be magical with Twig. So let me switch back here for a second. So if you notice here, we've got get cheese, because that's the the convention for the the get method. So if for some example, for some reason, um, just as an example, if we wanted to print the user's name, like hey name of user or user's email or something, would you like this sandwich? We could do it using user up here, whoops, user dot email as an example. That will call that method and it'll grab it for us and it'll just work. Or we could do username. So let's let's do username actually, that's kind of a better one. So coming back to our twig template, we can do user dot username was it? Yeah, okay. And we can reload the page. And, well, anonymous. <laughs> anonymous person, would you like a sandwich? <laughs> but that's pretty easy, right? Like, even though this is some kind of crazy newfangled Drupal 8 object, you can look at the methods on it and you can, most of the time, you can just kind of guess and say, okay, you know, uh, get username. Yeah, we'll try that and you can grab stuff out of there. And you, you'll you be able to do that um, on things like node objects and stuff too, like if you wanna grab like a node ID or th things like that. So there's your twig magic. And uh, let me go back to the slides. And uh, yeah, just um, if you get a chance, please evaluate our session. Let us know what you thought. Um, something you learned, something you wish we would have covered. Whatever you want to put in there, we would really appreciate it. Um, yeah, um, that's a good question. It's, I think it converts it to, I think it converts it all to lowercase. Yeah, yeah. This thing? Oh, the methods? Okay. Oh, the slide. Oh, okay, okay. This thing, yes. So, I believe it converts the whole thing to lowercase, um, so that you don't have to worry about the whole like camel case or whatever. Um, I think it just converts all lowercase, or it's yeah. I think it does that, or it's case insensitive. Either or. I could try. We could try it right now. <laughs> we could try user. And then like big U. That works. Like in general, Twig is pretty forgiving and it'll the errors are pretty good, in my opinion. Yeah, so it still it still works. So great question. Yep. Okay, there you go. So thank you, Steve. So yeah, it works. Um okay, yeah, so
So yeah, basically, uh, questions. I don't think there's a mic, but just raise your hand and we can, yeah, go ahead. After the curly brackets? Or inside? Um, the answer is it's not important, but it's a coding standards thing. Like that's part of the twig coding standards, so we just, we go by that. Um, it doesn't care either way, but it's just, it kind of looks cleaner. Similar to how like the Drupal coding standard of like putting dots around your, uh, or spaces around your dots when you're concatenating, whoops. So, yeah. Um, and uh, actually, b before, before we uh, take any more questions, I just want to mention, um, if anyone's interested in this stuff and kind of diving in, like we're going to be sprinting on Friday. So um, come find the front end United people if you're interested in that. Um, we also um, have an IRC channel, Drupal Twig, and Drupal, t Drupal Twig hashtag on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. You can also tweet us questions. And uh, we have like a Google Hangout every couple weeks where we just kind of get together in all our crazy time zones and talk through this stuff. So if you're interested in, uh, you know, helping us out, that would be awesome. But uh, yeah, any more any more questions? Oh, Zeep, sorry. Okay, so the question was basically, uh, I'm going to try and paraphrase. So basically, uh, one of the one of the kind of good things we got from Twig is that you can't uh, like drop your node table from a template. This is a good thing. Um, but um, so what Steve mentioned is that if you like that debug stuff we were just showing, it shows you all the methods that you call in the user object. So like potentially I could maybe like delete that user or something from the template and this is bad. <laughs> um, I haven't thought about this so I, I, I don't know what to say to that. That's uh, I'm shocked and appalled. <laughs> twig, <laughs> Twig, you, you got to own up for this Twig. <laughs> Listen to theme functions anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> did a lot of performance testing actually to get these templates from theme functions to template files um, and actually some of the ones that are remaining are the slow ones that we couldn't justify the the, the performance degradation on them so if they get called a lot they would have a, a and on a, a typical page they would have a, a large one and but typically we were seeing like one percent regression sometimes uh, if we fixed some of the pre-process we actually got things to go faster in some s situations so we tweaked the tweaked it a little bit but uh, yeah um, there's more work to generate it to read from a template file um, even if it's actually compiled to PHP which is what twig is actually compiled to PHP and it's running l as it if it if it is but inside that PHP file that looks kind of like a, a theme function it's doing a lot more than what it did before and that's that's actually the main the the main thing it's actually doing that escaping for you and that's that's kind of expensive and it's doing some um, magic uh, magic finding some of the the names for you so that's kind of expensive so 
but we did uh, we didn't see that large of a, a regression. That's that's how we got it in, and we had to do hours and hours of of, of profiling on these templates to get them in. Thank and you, the Fabian X. Yeah, and <laughs> back there. He hel yeah, Fabian got us <laughs> a helper kit. He got us a helper kit to make sure that we could actually run these tests, and it runs thousands of times, and gives us the the best results on both sides to see if they would be there. So. Yes, they are slower in some cases, but not by much uh, for the ones that we got in. The ones that we haven't got in, we haven't been able to uh, optimize them. Um, there's, like we said, 12 left. Um, and if they're on the admin side, we didn't take that much care on that side of it. But yeah, on the front end side, we had to be very particular about the speed. Thank you. Uh, Christopher? Sorry, can you repeat can that? You, can you oh, cause double escaping, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a whole other topic. Uh, um, it's, I, it's complicated. I, I could talk for half an hour on that with you. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it's complicated, yeah. Um, but there's a few there's a few critical like uh, escaping issues and we're gonna be working on those things but if you want to really know what it's uh, what's happening there come hang out with me and I'll show you <laughs> no not 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 particularly no okay yeah. Yeah. yeah cool any other yeah Sandra Okay, so the question is like, um, will there be a freeze on markup, roughly? Okay, so um, the answer is that markup is frozen once the first release candidate comes out. So if you want to help us and help Morton uh, kill some divs, uh, now's the time. <laughs> Anyone else? Sure. Okay, so the question was basically, um, there's there's this kind of infamous diagram of the Drupal 7 theme system, right? That's what you're talking with, all the little bubbles and stuff. And whether the fact that there's still theme functions in Drupal 8 was like kind of a matter of time, and whether there'll be theme functions in Drupal 9 or something completely different. So I think the answer is that, yes, it, it, it absolutely was a matter of time and resources. At the same time, you know, there is these performance issues, but, you know, given resources, maybe we could solve that. I, it's hard to say. Um, there are definitely some theme functions that are in there, and it's not because of performance that they're not converted. It's just no one really cares about them. It's not like it's like the node template. It's like some random admin template that's like on one page. Um, and then I think, yeah, Drupal 9 probably will be very, very different. Um, I think it would probably use some sort of template system still, but theme functions, I, unless there's still performance issues, I, I don't really see those sticking around. Yeah, I, I think basically we would convert all those to like the hash type thing that Joel was talking about, so that they'd just be like these small little compact things. Sure. Oh, right, so the question is, is there something actually saying that theme functions are deprecated? I'm pretty sure the answer is no. Um, sort of the problem with um, having all of our APIs live in these big nested arrays is that it's really hard to document when something is deprecated. So I'm not saying we can't do it, but... A couple of things that stop that from happening, though, is we, we've set the, the hook theme is now set for templates by default. Whereas before it was actually set for theme functions by default, so we converted that that part there. Um, and another thing is actually 
the theme function itself no longer exists. It got moved a little bit around, and for a while it was underscore theme so that people wouldn't be using it directly. Um, but now it's kind of in its own little bucket on a different thing. So, um, yeah, it's it's just hiding now. So we. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and also, I'll let you in on a secret. PHP template is still hiding in Drupal 8 in a dark, damp corner, <laughs> just begging for mercy. It's still there. It still works. But no, uh, does anyone want to use it? Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. Like, yeah, yeah, y yeah. It's not. It's not like it's super hidden. Like you can in your info file in your theme, you can set the engine to PHP template. But uh, we're just we've delegated <laughs> we've delegated um, Twig to manage the check plane like I was showing there. So um, it's kind of like up to the person that's creating the templates in PHP template to escape those things in their yeah. theme now, whereas before, we might have been doing it before for you, and now it's kind of all on your plate if you're going to be implementing a PHP template stuff, so yeah. it's a lot more work um, for you to do that. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we should let you go and have some dinner or something. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>